Su Kin Ni made a phone call to Miss Ni, intending to find a way to rectify the situation. But when Miss Na answered the phone, thinking the matter had already been successfully resolved, she was very cheerful. Subsequently, she heard advice from Miss Na advising her not to cause further trouble with that sect anymore, because their faction was too large. Miss Nai had also gone to apologize and said that she should not be sought out for the time being. Hearing this, Miss Nai angrily threw her phone to the ground, feeling resentful because her father was bedridden, yet Su Kin Nai was still only concerned about herself. Then Miss Nai plopped down on the sofa, thinking that she couldn't let herself be defeated like this and that there must be another way to resolve the situation. Her father, despite having influence in this city, was only ranked fifth and did not dare to confront the top figure. In the end, the sex still successfully opened. But and Su Nu felt very bored. She and her fox spirit friend, Linger, always being lively children, were given the task of being mascots, only to sit still for others to admire. So, and Su Nu stood up, pointing outside. Let's go, Linger. Let's see if there's anything fun outside. Then, the two of them walked out of the sect. As they passed by a room, and Su Nu suddenly saw two people comfortably sitting on luxurious chairs, a stark contrast to the chair she had just been sitting on. She asked why they were here. The two turned around, saw it was in Su Nu, and immediately adopted a respectful attitude, inviting her in. They said this was the control room, and there was nothing fun to play with. Hearing about the control room, and Su Nu, with her tiny brain, had no idea what that was. But when she suddenly looked up at the screen and recognized a microphone, identical to the one she and her master had used for karaoke singing, and Su Nu couldn't hide her excitement, she shouted a few hello hello into the microphone. At this moment, a guard warned that this was the broadcasting system for the entire sect, and if and Su Nu said anything, everyone could hear it. But engrossed in her joy, and Su Nu paid no heed to the warning and spoke into the microphone. Hello everyone, this is An Su Nu. I'm going to sing a song for you all. And Su Nu began to sing in an amateurish voice, causing everyone in the room to burst into uncontrollable laughter. She was innocent and adorable. But this made Tang Chao feel embarrassed because An Su Nu was a family member, and she had brought shame upon them all. However, An Su Nu was completely unaware of this and continued to sing passionately, causing the two guards to cover their ears. Even Linger could hardly bear it, Wondering would given and Su Nu the confidence to keep singing. Meanwhile, the Doist outside the sect, who couldn't hear and Su Nu's singing, were happily celebrating the opening day. Even Su Kin Ni, who had previously sent someone to cause trouble, was present and told Mu Yu that she had prepared a small gift as an apology. Mu Yu excitedly called out, Master, the person who caused trouble earlier has come to apologize and brought a gift. Should we accept it? Hearing this, Su Kin Nai felt fortunate to have encountered the Mu family. Today's visit turned out to be very wholesome. But soon after, the sound of Ensu Nu's small footsteps was heard. She appeared and said, Knowing one's mistake and correcting it is a mark of a good child, I will accept her gift. Meanwhile, everyone was gathered around watching the lion dance. This was the first time Ensu Nu had witnessed a lion dance, so she was very intrigued. The lion then came up to Ensu Nu and spit out a ribbon congratulating the grand opening, making her clap enthusiastically. At this moment, the elderly Daoist had captured everyone's attention. So he raised his hand to signal and said, With the grand opening of our sect, we are offering free blessings, spell services, and guidance on correcting mistakes. Anyone interested, please come inside. The scene shifts to the master lecturing on the Tao, along with Ensu Nu and his disciple. Below them, a group of bald-headed individuals was listening intently. In fact, the author also felt quite puzzled seeing this scene. It was clearly a senior figure lecturing on the scriptures. Yet there sat a row of monks below, which was truly baffling. After everything that happened today, and Su Nu finally reverted to the image of a well-behaved girl. But seeing in Su Nu like this, her parents felt a bit strange, because they were accustomed to her mischievous image. Now, and Su Nu suddenly became obedient making them feel as if they had lost something. Nevertheless, the master continued his lecture normally on the stage. Suddenly, everyone below simultaneously heard a bell ringing in their minds, resembling the bell of the sect. At this point, the master stroked his beard and asked, Did everyone hear the bell just now? He explained, That is the sound of the one-thought heart-clearing mantra bell that I struck. 
Those whom hear the bell will have their anger dissipate, their mood will become tranquil, which is very beneficial for health and longevity. Perhaps the most affected person was Fane, who used to be a wealthy hoodlum with heavy negative energy within. Hoodlums are often dominated by negative energy, and even a minor inconvenience can trigger their negative energy. Those who are easily influenced by negative energy are often perpetrators of major crimes. At this moment, and Sue News parents found the master's sermon remarkable. As everyone heard the bell, the couple asked each other if they heard it, but somehow neither of them heard anything. During this time, and Sue knew was sitting on the stage and suddenly made an uncomfortable gesture. Immediately after, a bell rang in her parents' minds. Upon hearing the bell, they felt their souls purified. Meanwhile, and Sue knew sat behind with a mischievous expression, secretly thinking that her bell sound must be more enjoyable than the master's tranquil bell. Seeing this, the master glanced at and Sue knew and quickly grabbed her head, preparing to reprimand her. The initially beautiful girl sat obediently listening to the master's sermon, but in just a moment, she reverted to being a mischievous child, causing mischief discreetly, which made the master angry and gave her a knock on the head. Actually, although she's playful, she obstructed the Tao fate that was passed down to her parents and even gave them alcohol. At this point, and Sue knew was caught by the master and disciplined, licking her lips, scratching her head, trying to escape. Seeing this, the master couldn't bring himself to punish her. After the master finished lecturing, Daois Zhao spoke up to the crowd, saying, The P.O. Mio sect officially opens today, specializing in the dark robes, sex medicine, and exercising demons. If anyone has a difficult-to-treat illness, they can come and try, but for common illnesses, they should still go to the hospital for treatment. He also added, The sect serves the people and not for profit. But as soon as he finished speaking, Zhao continued to introduce the sect's next paid services. Upon hearing this, the crowd respectfully bowed and then left one by one. Meanwhile, Miss Nai could be said to be very pleased because she thought that, although she didn't have a real relationship with Su Nu, she could smear Su Nu's reputation online. Therefore, she devised a malicious plan with the designer. At this time, at the Dijong High City Central Children's Hospital, a boy suffering from food poisoning was rushed into the emergency room clutching his stomach in pain. The boy's mother was always by his side comforting him. Somehow, Mu Chen Go also appeared at the hospital. Meanwhile, another person also rushed to the hospital in a panicked state, who was none other than Director Lai from the city's health department. But when Director Lai heard about bringing the matter to the sect, he immediately explained that when it comes to matters related to life, Mu Chen Go shouldn't speak recklessly, but should adhere to scientific methods instead. Anxious, scratching his head, Mu Chen Gu said to Director Lai, Do you have a better way? Trying once, even if not guaranteed success, is better than not trying at all. Otherwise, how can we know? Isn't it missing an opportunity for treatment? Hearing Mu Chen Gu's words, Director Lai thought for a moment and agreed. Meanwhile, at the PL Mio sex, because in Su Nu loves saying, they install the karaoke room inside. At this moment, and Su Nu was happily singing with the master. But suddenly, Mu Yu rushed in to report an urgent matter that required En Su Nu's attention. Hearing this, En Su Nu immediately turned off the music and asked Mu Yu, Is it a very serious matter? Mu Yu nodded and said, Very serious. From a mischievous child, En Su Nu shifted to a mode of being a doctor saving lives. It turned out that today, the Dijong High City Children's Hospital received some children suffering from food poisoning. Although the doctors knew they were poisoned, they couldn't determine the cause, so they could only watch the children suffer. Fortunately, Mu Chen Go suddenly thought of and Su Nu. Perhaps she could treat such severe cases. Therefore, with a trial attitude, he immediately contacted the sex personnel. But when Director Lai heard about bringing the matter to the Doas Temple, he immediately explained that when it comes to matters related to life, Mu Chen Go shouldn't speak recklessly, but should adhere to scientific methods instead. Anxiously scratching his head, Mu Chen Gu said to Director Lai, Do you have a better way? Trying once, even if not guaranteed success, is better than not trying all. Otherwise, how can we know? Isn't it missing an opportunity for treatment? Hearing Mu Chen Gu's words, Director Lai thought for a moment and agreed. Meanwhile, at PL Mio Sex, because in Su Nu loves singing, they install the karaoke room inside. At this moment, and Su Nu was happily singing with the master. But suddenly Mu Yu rushed in to report an urgent matter that required En Su Nu's attention. 
Hearing this, and Su Nu immediately turned off the music and asked Mu Yu, Is it a very serious matter? Mu Yu nodded and said, Very serious. From a mischievous child, and Su Nu shifted to a mode of being a doctor saving lives. It turned out that today, the Di Zhong High City Children's Hospital received some children suffering from food poisoning. Although the doctors knew they were poisoned, they couldn't determine the cause, so they could only watch the children suffer. Fortunately, Mu Chen Gu suddenly thought of Ensu Nu. Perhaps she could treat such severe cases. Therefore, with a trial attitude, he immediately contacted the personnel of the Douwes Temple. When Ensu Nu arrived, the boy was in such pain that he couldn't breathe. Knowing the urgency of the situation, and Su Nu didn't bother knocking, but rushed straight into the sick room. Seeing and Su Nu, Mu Chen Gu quickly urged her to save the boy. Seeing the human life threatened, and Su Nu immediately ran to the bedside and took the boy's pulse. At this point, the boy's parents also asked who and Su Nu was. Even Director Lai was puzzled, asking Mu Chen Gu, Is this girl the divine healer you mentioned, or the girl with the silk veil? Hearing this, Mu Chen Gu quickly silenced Director Lai, saying, Don't talk nonsense, and Su Nu is your master. After taking the pulse, and Su Nu explained that the toxin in the boy's body was extremely vicious, requiring the use of the seventh needle in the P.O. Mio sex to expel the evil and treat the illness. Hearing that their child was severely poisoned, the boy's parents begged and Su Nu to save him, and Su Nu reassured them that she would definitely cure the boy. After speaking, and Su Nu ordered everyone to leave, then instructed her junior disciple to assist her. Mu Chen Gu advised the boy's parents to step outside, then told and Su Nu that they would wait outside and to call if they needed anything. After everyone had left, and Su Nu took out her needle, but somehow, instead of treating the boy, she pricked her own hand and then touched her forehead with it. Witnessing this scene, Gu Jing Zhen was also extremely shocked. She wondered what and Su Nu was doing whether she was crazy to prick herself before treating the patient, or if she had malicious intentions to harm the boy. But considering An Su Nu's extraordinary medical talent, curing this serious illness was certainly not a problem. So why did she resort to such bizarre self-inflicted methods? Gu Jing Zhen decided to observe silently, hoping to understand An Su Nu's intentions. Nonetheless, she would stay here to protect An Su Nu and not let anyone harm her. Gu Jing Zhen realized that An Su Nu was using her own internal strength to save the boy. She had only read about this method in ancient books, thinking it was just something ancient scholars wrote to tell stories to children, never expecting it to be real. And the one who knew this method was a child. Then, An Su Nu quickly began to needle the boy, and in no time, the boy was pricked like a hedgehog. After finishing, An Su Nu took a deep breath and turned pale. Seeing this, Gu Jing Zhen worriedly inquired, because the girl was still young, and as she didn't understand this method well, it could be dangerous to her life. According to the author, Gu Jing Zhen was truly worried. She thought that with the 300-year-old skill of her master, curing this illness would be no problem at all, only because of old age her master refrained from intervening. This time, it can be said that An Su Nu really went all out to save a child. The girl daringly used difficult techniques to enhance her strength, as a result, although she saved the boy's life, and Su Nu herself became pale to the point of almost fainting, seeing and Su Nu sacrificing herself to save others, Gu Jing Zhen seemed to understand what a doctor's heart was like. However, right after that, the compassionate doctor and Su Nu suddenly felt dizzy and collapsed. Fortunately, Gu Jing Zhen reacted quickly, catching and Su Nu in time and helping her sit down on a chair, anxiously asking, Master, are you still holding up? And Su Nu raised her hand to signal that she was fine, just a little tired. Then she took out a bottle of medicine, swallowed a pill, and circulated her energy. Afterward, and Su Nu took a deep breath, feeling comfortable all over, her strength restored. She told Gu Jing Jin that they could take the boy out, and he would wake up in about five minutes. Hearing this, Gu Jing Jin hastily responded, then pushed the hospital bed out. Of course, in her imagination, Gu Jing Zhen pushed the bed easily. But in reality, the bed was too heavy, so she had to drag it step by step to get it out of the door. Finally, the door was pushed open with a creaking sound. Seeing the hospital bed being taken out, the doctors and the patient's parents immediately surrounded them, inquiring about the situation. Gu Jing Zhen explained, The boy is fine. 
He will wake up in about five minutes. The doctors still couldn't believe it, so they opened the boy's mouth to examine him. Seeing that the poison had been neutralized, they joyfully announced to everyone. Chief Lai immediately ordered to bring all the poisoned children here. Upon hearing this, Gu Jingzhen spoke up, hold on, then turned to the three old men. If you want the master to exhaust herself to death, then continue bringing more people here. The three men looked at each other, unsure of what to do. At this moment, and Su Nu staggered out and said, bring all the patients here for the girl to treat. But obviously, and Su Nu was extremely tired at this point, with dark circles under her eyes. This was completely contrary to the image of Ensu Nu, who was always agile and quick. Seeing this, the disciples were alarmed and loudly asked why Ensu Nu was so exhausted. Gu Jing Jen, obviously more understanding than the old men, quickly asked Ensu Nu, just treating one person, and you're already exhausted like this, let alone dozens more. Can your body handle it? Although pale-faced and sweating coldly, and Su Nu still said, It's okay. At this point, Mr. Ju and Mr. Zhao felt at a loss. So they turned to ask for the opinion of the junior disciple who was happily eating lotus seed candies. When asked, the junior disciple seemed dazed, then closed his eyes to chew the candy. And when he opened his eyes, junior disciple Xuan Kong simply said, Drink plenty of hot water. That's fine. Hearing this, both Mr. Ju and Mr. Zhao truly felt like banging their heads against the wall. Despite seeing the situation was not good, the senior disciples still discussed and then instructed Chief Lai to bring in all the patients. As a result, ambulances lined up one after another, causing the hospital to be overcrowded, and Su Nu persistently treated each patient one by one. But every time she performed the demon-expelling technique, she had to take a deep breath. And Su Nu thought to herself, keep going, saving one life is worth it, even though this method may save lives. However, it also consumed too much vital energy, and and Su Nu almost exhausted herself to death. But then and Su Nu thought again, no, if I don't treat them all, those children will die. She absolutely would not let that happen. Just as she finished that thought, and Su Nu suddenly felt dizzy and collapsed to the ground. Outside, there were still many children waiting to be treated, but 15 minutes had passed without any sign of Ensu Nu, prompting Mr. Zhao to inquire. Gu Jing Zhen explained that before treating, Ensu Nu usually self-stimulated her acupoints and vital points to increase the speed of her foot's energy release, using the needles to guide the energy. But this was very dangerous, and if not careful, it could threaten Ensu Nu's life. Hearing that Ensu Nu might be in danger, the three old men no longer paid attention to her instructions and rushed into the room. They witnessed an unforgettable scene, and Su Nu, always invincible in their eyes, now lying motionless, drenched in cold sweat, her body curled up into a small heap. Seeing that, Mr. Zhao quickly picked up and Su Nu, while Mr. Zhu instructed Mu Yu to run and inform the master and Su Nu's mentor. At that time, the mentor was singing in the karaoke room at the temple. Upon hearing that Ensu Nu fainted while saving someone, the mentor's gaze shifted from casual to cold and murderous. Then the mentor muttered, How unfortunate. The rebuke shook the nearby melon seed plate, causing a few seeds to jump. The elder, once renowned in the martial world, was now enraged to the point where his neck veins bulged. Formerly highly respected, he had become careless after leaving the mountains, drinking, racing cars, and singing with his cousin, Tang Xiao. However, Upon hearing that Ensu Nu fainted while saving someone, he finally revealed the demeanor of a senior. Immediately after, the mentor swiftly moved to Ensu Nu's side. Meanwhile, the elders were still nervously biting their nails, wondering why the master had not arrived yet. But in the blink of an eye, a sharp sound echoed, and Ensu Nu's mentor suddenly appeared. The four elders felt a ray of hope and burst into tears. But then Ensu Nu's mentor said, Everyone leave! Although they did not understand the reason, the elders obeyed the master's command to leave. Meanwhile, Chief Lai was somewhat shocked to see the sudden appearance of the master. This was completely contrary to the scientific principles he always upheld. At this moment, Nu Chen Gu explained, There are many things in this world that cannot be explained by science. After everyone left, the mentor began to treat En Su Nu. At this point, a golden stream of energy flowed into En Su Nu's face and Su Nu woke up weakly, calling out, Master. But the master told her not to speak. 
quickly accept the ancestral essence that the master passes on. Seeing the master had to use the ancestral essence to save her, and Su Nu was moved to tears. It was something passed down from generation to generation among the leaders of the P.O. Mio sex, only inherited by the sex leaders. Thinking of the master's kindness, and Su Nu was overwhelmed with joy. After transferring the ancestral essence, the master also breathed a sigh of relief. And Su Nu then asked the master what to do now that she had received all the ancestral essence. But the master just patted and Su Nu's head and explained that the ancestral essence no longer meant anything to his power. It was just a symbol of status. But for and Su Nu, it was very important. Hearing that, and Su Nu looked at the master with a very displeased expression. Master is joking with me like a three-year-old child again. Without the ancestral essence, the master should at least reduce ten years of lifespan. But the master just waved his hand and said it was okay. He had lived for hundreds of years, long enough. And Su Nu continued to ask, Thanks to the ancestral essence, how long can the master live? The master replied, About 180 years. Upon hearing this, and Su Nu was startled. If she were to live that long, she would become an old witch. Meanwhile, the four elders were anxiously praying outside, patiently waiting. Finally, they waited for and Su Nu to open the door and step out. Immediately, and Su Nu rolled up her sleeves, saying she was fine, urging them to hurry and bring all the patients in. Thanks to inheriting the ancestral essence, and Su Nu's internal strength was now much stronger. She treated the patients with ease, and her acupuncture techniques were even more skillful than before. And Su Nu was now so strong that she could treat a batch of patients at once without physical contact. Within just 10 minutes, all the patients were cured. When finished, and Su Nu clapped her hands and declared that she had treated everyone. Seeing this, the four elders were deeply moved. They were accustomed to the miraculous feats performed by and Su Nu. But this time, curing all the patients in just 10 minutes truly made them admire her. At this moment, a tall figure rushed over. Feng, holding a phone, said to and Su Nu, Miss and Su Nu, someone has recorded a video of you treating patients and posted it online. There are many negative comments about the P.O. Mio sex on the internet. Furthermore, as Feng explained, the video has spread widely on the internet, causing the P.O. Mio sex to receive mixed opinions. Some recognized and Su Nu's medical talent, but many doubted, thinking it was a scam. There were even rumors spreading that and Su Nu was a demon or a witch, deceiving people for personal gain. Those rumors made and Su Nu extremely distressed because she was the savior of many suffering patients and deserved respect and admiration. Subsequently, many people came to protest in front of the sect, accusing and Su Nu of being heartless and demanding justice for themselves. Angrily, she struck someone, but the person feigned victimhood, accusing her of oppressing innocent people and questioning the existence of justice. However, and Su Nu retorted in anger, stating that she hadn't actually hit him. Feng hurriedly restrained her, warning that the despicable person was deliberately provoking her, and if she were to hit him for real, it would be captured and immediately posted online, tarnishing her reputation irreparably. He then showed her the negative news about her circulating online, all smearing her reputation, and Su Nu wiped away her tears, insisting, I haven't done anything wrong. They're just spreading lies. At this point, the master reassured and Su Nu. We all know that these rumors aren't true. Someone must be intentionally spreading fake news to cause trouble. And Su Nu, feeling comforted, leaned into her master's embrace. Never having been so misunderstood before, especially after fainting while saving the child. Mu Chen Go rushed forward, pointing at the crowd, arrest these despicable people and take them to the police station for interrogation. We'll find out who's behind all this mischief. The terrified crowd fell to their knees, begging and Su Nu for forgiveness. And Su Nu demanded to know who was behind it, threatening to involve the police if they didn't confess. Upon hearing this, they immediately revealed that it was Miss Nai who paid them 300 yuan a day to stage the whole drama. And Su Nu nodded. Indeed, she had threatened to apprehend them if they didn't confess but she never promised forgiveness upon their admission. The crowd cheered, but and Su Nu quickly dismissed it, saying, I only said I would arrest them if they didn't confess. I never said I wouldn't take them to the police station if they did. Subsequently, each received a reward and handcuffs. Mu Chen Gu added that he was the deputy chief of police in the city, 
urging anyone with information to approach him as he was well informed. And Su Nu fumed inwardly, thinking, Miss Nye is despicable. This time, she framed me and tarnished my reputation. I won't let this slide. It was Miss Nye again. Initially, she had looked down on and Su Nu and provoked conflicts multiple times. And Su Nu was genuinely angry at being underestimated and attacked by her. Thinking this, and Su Nu clenched her teeth in anger and asked Fang. Negative rumors are spreading all over the internet. Did Miss Nye buy off public opinion? Fang explained. Miss Nye definitely hired people to write and comment on posts to frame us. Upon hearing this, and Su Nu asked, Shouldn't we also hire people to support us? To post today's healing work on the internet? To break those rumors? Fang, the young master, eagerly responded, Exactly, Miss Nye wants to push us to the top of the search. So we'll swim against the tide by posting the story of our junior sister healing children online. We'll surely become famous very quickly. And Su Nu pointed at the group of people. Those people also spread rumors. Can we arrest them? Fang replied, We'll sue them. The slanderers will be compelled to compensate for the damages. And Su Nu agreed, deciding not to seek revenge, but to focus on healing others because doing good would defeat evil on its own. Subsequently, the Dijon High City Police provided information about the Nay family's use of people to write negative comments, framing and sue new online. The news quickly spread, prompting the Nay family to publicly apologize and remove the negative comments. Meanwhile, and sue new remained devoted to healing, paying no attention to revenge. After the incident, and sue new's reputation soared, and everyone recognized her as a medical deity, skilled and compassionate. P.O. Mio Sex also gained widespread recognition as a dedicated, non-profit healing institution. The story of her healing the children quickly attracted the attention of the online community, with everyone supporting the efforts to uncover the culprit behind the incident. Meanwhile, Miss Nye was waiting for news at home, when she heard that her clandestine actions had been completely exposed, which directly impacted her family's conglomerate. Nee's family called, demanding that Miss Nye quickly resolve the matter, threatening to expel her from the conglomerate if she failed to do so. After speaking, they abruptly hung up, leaving Miss Nye stunned and flustered. Regaining her composure, Miss Nye hurriedly tried to make amends but couldn't reach her friends. Evidently, they had blocked her number. Sitting on the ground, Trembling, she couldn't believe she was a refined elite of society who couldn't handle a four-year-old. Meanwhile, at Su Nu's home, she was happily playing with her younger brother. The boy mimicked her by riding on the back of a puppy. After a while, and Su Nu lifted him up, saying she would teach him to call her sister. But the boy nonchalantly responded, Okay, okay, which earned him a scolding from Su Nu. If he couldn't call her sister, he would be spanked. At that moment, a servant arrived to report that a girl claiming to be from the Nay family wanted to see and Su Nu. Hearing the name Ni and Su Nu immediately looked displeased, dismissed the girl, and stated that she had already refused treatment. The servant complied. The next day, while and Su Nu was lecturing her disciples, Miss Nai appeared, bowing to the floor, begging and Su Nu for forgiveness and a chance to treat her father, as he had suffered another episode the previous night but his speech had become unclear, indicating that his illness might be in its final stage. Mu Yu was furious when Miss Nai mentioned her father's illness, trying to appear pitiable while avoiding mentioning the online troublemakers and suggesting that they had staged protests outside the sex door. Upon hearing this, Miss Nai slapped herself, admitting that she was responsible for everything and willing to accept any punishment, but she begged and Su Nu to consider her father's condition and help. Mu Yu thought to herself, This little brat is truly ruthless. And Su Nu reiterated that if she had refused treatment, she wouldn't proceed. But seeing Miss Nye's expression, she continued, Listen to me carefully. I won't treat him, but Gu Jing Zhen might be able to help you. Upon hearing this, Miss Nye quickly turned to look at Gu Jing Zhen with hopeful eyes, begging her to save her father and promising to repay her. Gu Jing Zhen hesitated. Knowing that Miss Nye had previously harmed and Su Nu, but if she ignored Mr. Nye, it would be pitiful. However, Gu Jing Zhen shook her head, explaining that she had already treated Mr. Nye before, but his condition was beyond her capabilities. Hearing this, and Su Nu suggested that Mr. Ju would assist in dispelling evil spirits, while Gu Jing Zhen focused on treating Mr. Nye, so Miss Nye wouldn't have to go against her own words. Miss Nye joyfully thanked and Su Nu 
But afterwards, Miu Yu whispered to and Su Nu that because Miss Nai had treated them poorly in the past, they should charge a higher fee this time, considering that the Ni family was wealthy. And Su Nu nodded, delegating the fee negotiation to Miu Yu. Seeing this, Miu Yu's eyes sparkled, and Miss Nai sensed that she might have to pay a hefty price. Realizing that Miu Yu demanded the Nei family transfer 5% of their shares to the P.O. Mio sex, Miss Nai was somewhat surprised, but for the sake of her father, she reluctantly accepted. Miu Yu was ecstatic, feeling like she had won a victory, while Miss Nai felt dejected. Meanwhile, and Su Nu handed a medicinal pill to Gu Jing Zhen, instructing him to give it to Mr. Nai to stabilize his condition first. That Gu Jing Zhen would proceed with her treatment, and finally, they would rely on Mr. Zhou to dispel the evil spirits. Elsewhere, Tang Chao was staring at himself in the mirror, doubting his own appearance. Ever since he publicly acknowledged his relationship with Gu Jing Zhen, he had been feeling insecure about his looks. He realized that he had been around for a while, but Gu Jing Zhen had never shown any concern for him, often being absent and focusing on her medical duties. Tang Chao felt despondent, thinking, Perhaps I'm too ugly to charm Gu Jing Zhen. Gu Jing Zhen completely ignored him. Previously, he had given her flowers, but she had only accepted them to plant them, showing no interest in him. Faced with Gu Jing Zhen's cold attitude, Tang Xiao was considering whether to ask and Su Nu to help change her feelings towards him. He was willing to do anything to win her heart, but he thought that asking and Su Nu again would make him look foolish so he decided that targeting and Su Nu's younger brother would be the best approach. At this moment, after treating Mr. Ni's illness, Gu Jing Jian intended to rest. Surprisingly, and Su Nu's mother carried her younger brother to meet and Su Nu, saying the boy missed his sister and kept calling her name. Seeing the boy continuously calling out, suddenly his eyes lit up and he drooled upon seeing Gu Jing Jian and Su Nu, furious at her brother's mischievous behavior, wanted to scold him. But Tang Xiao instead patted the boy's head and introduced him to Gu Jing Zhen as his cousin. Then he instructed the boy to greet Gu Jing Zhen. When Gu Jing Zhen returned the greeting, Tang Xiao felt jealous that his younger brother was occupying the attention of his future wife. Suddenly, the boy snatched away the cloth covering Gu Jing Zhen's face, revealing her beautiful face. Gu Jing Zhen's beauty almost made Tang Xiao faint, but he reminded himself to stay calm and persist in pursuing his love. Tang Xiao was overwhelmed by Gu Jing Jin's beauty, and even in Su Nu was astonished. Gu Jing Jin hastily covered her face again and turned to scold Tang Xiao. What are you staring at? Haven't you ever seen a beautiful person before? Quickly turn away. But Tang Xiao not only didn't turn away, but also coquettishly said, I know the rules of your sect. Whoever sees your appearance must marry you, and besides our family, I'm the only boy here, so I'll take responsibility for you. Meanwhile, and Su Nu was scolding her younger brother while pinching his cheek. Okay, so you only care about beautiful sisters and forget about your own sister, huh? The boy struggled and cried, but and Su Nu continued teasing him as a punishment. Eventually, the two siblings ended up chasing each other around the room. At this point, Gu Jing Jian had readjusted her face veil and said to Tang Chao, If you're not willing to take responsibility for her, then who will? Hearing this, Tang Xiao was deeply moved and cried emotionally, silently admiring An Su Nu's younger brother. In fact, today Tang Xiao deliberately brought An Su Nu's younger brother, hoping that the boy could snatch down Gu Jing Zhen's face veil. This way, after seeing Gu Jing Zhen's face, she would either have to marry him or kill him. Tang Xiao was very confident in his own appearance, so he was certain that Gu Jing Zhen would choose to marry him. Now he had succeeded, finally, with the help of the boy. Tang Xiao had achieved his goal of being paired with Gu Jing Zhen. The two were now deeply engrossed in each other, much to the annoyance of An Su Nu. At this moment, An Su Nu heard the bodyguard report, Boss Wang has delivered the goods. Excitedly, she hurried to the door to welcome her senior brother. True enough, An Su Nu saw her handsome senior brother carrying a lot of valuable herbs. Gu Jing Zhen looked on, realizing the immense value of these herbs, some of which were even rare to find in ancient texts. Nevertheless, and Su Nu cheerfully greeted her senior brother and said, Boss Wang, you've delivered all the goods. The money I paid in advance last time is enough for this payment, and it's all used up now. After finishing speaking, and Su Nu gestured for her guards to bring in the medicine. However, Gu Jing Jian intervened, saying, It's best to select trustworthy individuals, 
and handle this with utmost care, as everything is precious and needs to be preserved in the safest possible place to avoid accidental damage or loss. And Su Nu and her guards exchanged puzzled looks. And Su Nu reassured them, saying, It's okay, the in family guards are very reliable, we can temporarily keep it in the girls' room. Upon hearing and Su Nu's praise, the guards were deeply moved, almost teary eyed. Then, unexpectedly, a senior marshal brother offered to help the girl and asked her to lead the way for him. The girl happily replied, Thank you, senior brother. Afterwards, she thought to herself, Perhaps the senior brother is trying to find a way to meet the master. And Su Nu immediately led the senior brother upstairs and pointed to a room, saying, This is the master's room. The senior brother knocked on the door and immediately knelt down on the floor, respectfully informing the master, Disciple Leng Yivu has come to visit master. However, the master had no reaction, only inquiring about the senior brother's situation. The senior brother reported that the disciples of the evil sect had been lurking around him. Although they hadn't shown themselves, he had managed to defeat them all. They probably followed and Su knew here, hence knowing that the heavenly book was with the girl. Therefore, the junior sister was no longer as safe as before. The master opened his eyes and acknowledged that he had long predicted this. At the same time, he assured that he would protect Nu Nu very well. The senior brother just needed to attract their attention so that Ensu Nu could practice some supreme techniques from the heavenly book, then the senior brother could safely withdraw. After finishing speaking, the master handed three talismans and said they could save the senior brother's life in case of emergency. The senior brother hastily expressed his gratitude and carefully put them away. At this moment, Ensu Nu perked up with surprise, wondering why the master and senior brother were speaking so mysteriously. And Su Nu was curious unsure of what the master and senior brother were hiding from her. Do you still remember in Su Nu's junior marshal brother, Zhuan Kong, Wu Yang Faifei? Recently, due to increasing attention towards the P.L. Mio sex, her junior marshal brother, Wu Yang Faifei, has become a famous figure in the martial arts community. The main reason is because her junior marshal brother is exceptionally handsome, with rosy lips, fair skin, and a celestial aura since childhood. Lately, many successful individuals have brought their daughters, hoping to court her junior martial brother as a son-in-law. Even the normally proud and aristocratic young ladies, upon meeting her junior martial brother, are captivated by his dazzling beauty and extraordinary demeanor. Everyone wants to immediately take her junior martial brother home. In her spare time, and Su Nu strolled around the martial arts community and saw her junior martial brother being surrounded by debutantes. And Su Nu smirked inwardly, thinking, how strange it is these days, for a young man who only knows how to advise people to drink hot water to be pursued like this. Continuing, as she observed her junior martial brother being chased by several girls, a group of people came to thank and Su Nu for her intervention in saving 30 children. Their police department was preparing a report and seeking recognition for her, and Su Nu simply stated, saving lives is what a medical practitioner should do. The head of the department, Lai praised her for her noble character and skilled hands, and Su Nu explained, Healing and saving lives is the duty of a doctor. No need for thanks. However, Director Lai continued, saying that esteemed figures in the Chinese medical field were very interested in and Su Nu's medical techniques and wished to invite her for academic exchange. Hearing this, and Su Nu's inexperienced mind didn't comprehend what being invited for academic exchange meant. At this point, Mefang Xian spoke up on her behalf. Our master holds a prestigious position and cannot easily make appearances. If the elder is interested in the dark robes sex artistry, please invite him to our sect. Director Lee pondered, weighing the reputation of the elder and An Su Nu. Ultimately, he decided to prioritize An Su Nu, as she could heal illnesses that even top hospitals couldn't. Therefore, Director Lai expressed intentions to negotiate with the elder for a possible visit to their sect for exchange the next day. However, and Su Nu paid no attention to this matter, continuing to focus on enjoying her sweet pastry. Later, she returned home, cleaned herself up, changed into fresh clothes, and sat on her bed. She thought that today, having inherited the ancient divine power, her ability to comprehend the heavenly book would increase. Opening the book, and Su Nu suddenly saw the technique Light Sword Gentle Mastery, and Su Nu scratched her head, remarking, the name of this technique doesn't seem to apply significant damage. 
Despite some hesitation, and Su Nu began practicing according to the book. Indeed, the rubbish technique remained just that rubbish, and Su Nu was quick to learn, grasping it all in a blink. However, when she raised her hand to test her strength, she found it utterly useless, even weaker than her own initial strike. Dissatisfied, and Su Nu repeatedly attempted the light sword, gentle mastery technique, yet it yielded no strength whatsoever. Frustrated, she departed using the Three Heavens Lightning Movement Technique. Appearing before her junior martial brother, she expressed her desire for him to assess the power of her newly learned technique, but to no avail. Before he could respond, and Su Nu exclaimed the light sword, gentle mastery, and struck towards her junior martial brother. Yet once again, the strike proved entirely futile. Her junior martial brother remarked, Is such a useless thing considered a technique? Observing this, the junior martial brother shrugged, then stood close to An Su Nu, offering to endure her strikes with all his might. In his mind, he pondered the soft and feeble strikes of his junior martial sister, contemplating whether he should enhance his acting skills and pretend to be blown away. And Su Nu expressed her gratitude and focused all of her strength into a strike, a powerful light sword, gentle mastery that resounded loudly, causing her junior martial brother to tremble. And Su Nu looked on in surprise as her junior martial brother lay on the ground, laughing uncontrollably, scratching all over. It was then that An Su Nu realized this technique was meant to induce laughter, making one burst into tears of joy. So it seemed the heavenly book intended for An Su Nu to practice a skill specialized in amusement. Inspired by this revelation, and Su Nu resolved to test her newly learned technique on her master. So the girl impatiently left without explaining the technique to her senior martial brother, despite the junior martial brother's uncontrollable laughter. Seeing her master meditating with closed eyes, and Su Nu quietly appeared behind and raised her hand, preparing to attack. At that moment, her master opened his eyes, pulled in Su Nu down, and while spanking her, scolded, You naughty little one, dare you disrespect your master again? And Su Nu cried out, promising not to do it again. The master explained that the light sword gentle mastery could make people burst into laughter for about 30 seconds and combined with the three heavens lightning movement technique, these two techniques could be used for easy escape. Meanwhile, the elderly figure known as the master of medicine in the medical community had also arrived at An Su Nu's house as planned. Upon seeing An Su Nu, she fly bowed and introduced the elderly figure as the shining star in the medical community whom he had mentioned earlier. Hearing this, and Su Nu curiously asked about the significance of being a shining star. She fly explained, that is the foremost doctor in the whole country. Hearing this, and Su Nu thought Chi Fly was flattering, so she sat down to meditate alone, ignoring him. Seeing this, Chi Fly felt awkward because the elderly figure had come all this way. Yet, and Su Nu disregarded him. To salvage the situation, Chi Fly smiled and explained to the elderly figure that and Su Nu was the divine healer who had saved children before. Although he didn't understand medical techniques, he knew that and Su Nu's acupuncture skills were truly amazing. Hearing this, the old man smiled warmly at and Su Nu and said, Dear little Nu Nu, I'm just an ordinary doctor, not a shining star. If you prefer, you can simply call me sir. And Su Nu opened one eye to look at him, then listened as he continued, I have a little knowledge of traditional medicine. Today, I've brought along a rare case, hoping that An Su Nu could help treat it. Despite feeling uneasy about the old man's formal demeanor, and Su Nu agreed out of compassion. The old man whistled, and a man with a pale face slowly entered. He explained that this person suffered from muscle atrophy, had tried Western medicine with unclear results, and traditional Chinese medicine treatment hadn't shown improvement either. Hence, seeking and Su Nu's assistance. And Su Nu called the patient over and prepared for examination. After taking his pulse, she explained that there was congestion in the tendons and bones, leading to poor blood circulation, gradually causing muscle atrophy and eventually death. The remedy was to use acupuncture to cut off the three parts of the congested tendon pathways. Hearing this, the old man asked if acupuncture had been attempted before but proved ineffective. And Su Nu explained that due to the old man's limited abilities, the acupuncture wasn't effective enough, hence yielding no results. She hesitated, saying however, which made Chief Lai and the old man tense, prompting them to inquire further. Suddenly, and Su Nu's eyes lit up, she turned to ask Ma Fan Qian about the fee collection method for treating this case 
causing Chief Lai and the old man to fall to the ground. They thought there was more to the story. However, the old man suddenly spoke up, saying, The acupuncture needles and Su Nu is using are state property and must be returned, which made her furious, wanting to strike him. The truth was, the old man was highly esteemed in the Chinese medical community. Despite being at the forefront of global medicine, he couldn't cure his son's rare illness. Hearing of Su Nu's reputation for treating various rare ailments, he brought his son along, intending not only to exchange academic knowledge, but also to ask her for treatment without compensation. But Su Nu was sharp-witted and immediately sensed his intention. She asked, If I cure him, how much will you pay me? The man accompanying them interjected, saying, This is merely an academic exchange. There should be no fee. However, Mei Fan Chien argued, Medical treatment requires payment. Academic exchange is one thing, but medical treatment is another, and should be compensated. However, the P.O. Mio sex operate on a voluntary basis. If you don't want to pay, you can contribute with spiritual offerings. So Mei Fan Chien continued, For this illness in Western medicine, treatment costs around 30 to 300,000. But if Fan Su Nu can cure what others can't, she should be paid 10 times more, totaling 3 million. Realizing he couldn't refuse, the old man reluctantly agreed. Seeing this, and Su Nu joyfully pulled out her set of divine magnetite stones. Astonished, the old man asked, Is this the legendary divine magnetite stone? And Su Nu was surprised that he recognized her acupuncture needles and hastily asked, How do you know about them? The old man explained that in the prestigious realm of traditional Chinese medicine, there are four divine acupuncture tools, among which the divine magnetite stone is the most potent. He considered himself fortunate to witness it firsthand today. But after he finished speaking, and Su Nu innocently asked, Is this set of needles really valuable? This question angered the old man, who explained that this wasn't about money, but rather concerned a national treasure. Previously, a set of divine acupuncture tools had been auctioned off for 500 million dong, but then the Cultural Relics Bureau intervened, declaring it a national treasure and prohibiting the auction, resulting in its cancellation. Now, it is being safeguarded at the Dijong High Museum. Hearing this, and Su Nu grew worried and asked if the museum might come to seize her acupuncture needles. The old man hesitantly replied, This matter pertains to a national treasure. But and Su Nu angrily interjected, threatening that anyone who dared to come and seize her needles would lose their teeth right then and there. At this point, she fly hurriedly reassured and Su Nu that with him present, nobody would dare to take her needles. Afterward, and Su Nu began acupuncture treatment for the old man's son. While concentrating, the old man realized that and Su Nu was diagnosing with her Kai. Few people throughout history could do such a thing. Yet now, even a child of four or five could accomplish it. He felt like he was witnessing a miracle. However, in no time, and Su Nu completed the treatment, and the old man sighed with relief. The girl instructed the old man's son to go home and eat plenty of meat to recover quickly. Seeing how easily she treated the illness, the young man accompanying them objected. You only needled for three minutes. Demanding three million is outrageous. But surprisingly, the old man frowned, knelt down before and Su Nu, and asked which martial arts sect she hailed from. He wanted to take her as his disciple. Seeing this, the four disciples beside them exchanged glances, concerned that if the old man accepted and Su Nu as his disciple, it would create competition for their positions. Therefore, they whispered to and Su Nu that she should not accept disciples, as it would make her life difficult. Although they all practiced medicine, each belonging to different sects, it would be better if the mystic medical practitioners remained united. The old man was puzzled, not understanding what he had done wrong, that even the junior divine healer hadn't spoken up, yet four old men suddenly appeared to intervene. But immediately, and Su Nu said to the old man, Fine, then I won't accept anymore. Upon hearing this, the old man felt as if his heart had shattered, while Mr. Zhu felt relieved and quickly thanked An Su Nu for declining. Ma Fan Xian also nodded in agreement, saying, Teaching medicine to outsiders must be carefully considered. It's not something to take lightly. Mr. Zhou breathed a sigh of relief when An Su Nu declined, but Mr. Mu said to her, Master, after all, the old man is a senior in the medical field. Rejecting him isn't very appropriate. Perhaps you could let him apprentice under you instead. Hearing this, the old man, who had been eavesdropping, suddenly brightened up. 
The apprentices of these old men were the senior brothers of the junior divine healer, and they would surely be more skilled than Ensu Nu. Finally, he knelt down, begging Ensu Nu to allow him to enter her sect and learn from any master. Seeing this, Ensu Nu gestured towards the junior martial brother, who was taking pulses on the other side, and said he was her master. The junior martial brother responded to recall, and brought his hot water flask over. As Ensu Nu recounted the incident, the old man quickly bowed to the junior martial brother Xuan Kong as his master, and the junior martial brother immediately asked the old man, Are you thirsty? Have some hot water. This bewildered the old man. Meanwhile, aboard the luxurious yacht, the music echoed. Tang Chiao and Feng, the young master, danced passionately with the girls. Seeing his master tired, Tang Xiao stopped and led him to sit and rest for a while. Suddenly, the master spotted a group of armed men speeding towards them on a speedboat, realizing they meant trouble. He instructed everyone to take the girls inside the boat and hide, not to come out until permitted. After evacuating, the master stood on the deck, observing the situation below. Suddenly, the hook of the group's boat was thrown onto theirs, and a gang of pirates cheered loudly, ready to board. As the pirates approached, the master remained calm, stroking his beard, waiting for Fang, the young master, to drive everyone off the deck. After Fang, the young master warned, Master, be careful. The aggressive pirates advanced closer to the master, but he simply smirked and pushed them away with a gentle motion of his hand. A beam of golden light emanated from his palm, causing the pirates to freeze, their weapons slipping from their grasp. They felt an invisible force pulling them together, then the master exerted another push, making them feel like they were being compressed, resulting in them vomiting out their dinner. Subsequently, they flew off the boat like pancakes into the sea. Observing this, the master stroked his beard, thinking how foolish the disciples of the evil sect were, acting without understanding their opponent. At this moment, Feng, the young master, asked Tang Chao, Did senior brother see anything? But he shook his head, saying, Didn't see anything. Feng. The young master agreed, and they both decided to keep the secret for their master. And Su Nu arranged her guards in a line and began executing the light sword gentle mastery on each of them, causing them to roll around in laughter endlessly. And Su Nu was satisfied to see her guards lying on the ground, laughing uproariously. Suddenly, the old man referred to her as Junior Marshal's sister. And Su Nu turned back and asked, What do you need? The old man sighed, my master doesn't know acupuncture, only uses herbs and spells. Upon hearing this, and Su Nu said, Even though senior martial brother doesn't know acupuncture, his medical skills are excellent. If you don't want to learn, you can leave the sect. But the old man quickly waved his hand, denying any intention of leaving. He then expressed his gratitude to his master, stating how much he had been taught. He came here for another reason to invite in Su Nu and her senior martial brother to attend his lecture at Dijong High Medical University tomorrow. Hearing about the lecture and eager for a chance to show off, and Su Nu agreed immediately without hesitation. Seeing this, the old man departed joyfully. However, at that moment, four disciples appeared behind and Su Nu. Mr. Zhu smiled brightly as he handed and Su Nu a pill, which they had concocted according to her previous prescription. They had successfully manufactured 300 pills adding a bit of rare dragon's knee herb, and reduced the cost to 50,000 yuan per pill. And Su Nu, curious, examined the pill and found its quality to be excellent, capable of preventing serious illnesses and extending life to 100 years. Listening to An Su Nu's explanation, the four disciples were amazed. Mr. Mu spoke about pricing, presenting two options, selling at a high price for profit or selling cheaply to serve the poor. He asked and Su Nu what to do. Considering Mr. Mu's opinion, and Su Nu raised her hand and said, The master often teaches compassion. So let's sell the pill at an affordable price, only to those who are destined to have it. Ultimately, the longevity granting pill was priced at 100,000 yuan and sold exclusively to members of the sect, with a limit of one pill per person per year. As soon as the news spread, wealthy elders in Dijonghai, upon hearing of its life extending properties, rushed to buy out the pills in just one day. The four disciples made a fortune, but were extremely exhausted. Meanwhile, and Su Nu and her junior brother went to the venue for a lecture. Upon arrival, they attracted the attention of most people, 
especially the girls enchanted by the beauty of the junior brother. They eagerly ran back to praise the junior brother for his handsome appearance like a star and captivating eyes, which made them feel dizzy and faint, seeing how he attracted attention. And Su Nu felt uncomfortable, jealous of the fervent admiration of the girls towards him. Looking at the hot water bottle around his neck, she turned green with envy, unable to bear it any longer. And Su Nu told Wen Sin to quickly find a cloth bag to cover the junior brother's face so he wouldn't charm the girls anymore. Seeing the girl forgotten, luckily another girl carried a face veil, so and Su Nu asked them to cover the junior brother's face. The junior brother, still unaware, was kicked by and Su Nu and ordered to quickly cover his face. Otherwise, she would steal all of her glory. Reluctantly, the junior brother obeyed and Su Nu's command to cover his face. He couldn't understand why simply walking could attract such attention, but faced with Su Nu's fierce attitude, he only knew to comply. Seeing the junior brother wearing a face veil, everyone's attention shifted away from him, satisfying and Su Nu. Upon reaching the entrance of the assembly hall, the disciples of the old man were already waiting and led them to a small resting room where the old man awaited. Seeing and Su Nu and the junior brother, the old man hurriedly called out, Master, Senior Disciple. This form of address astonished the leaders of the sect, curious about the identities of the two newcomers addressed in such a way by the old man. Without any explanation, the old man told and Su Nu that the discussion was about to begin, and he would bring her up to the stage first. He invited and Su Nu, because he wanted her to showcase her talent and broaden everyone's horizons. Today, there were many professors and students from the school, as well as stubborn practitioners of both Eastern and Western medicine attending. The discussion was about the integration of traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, and Western medicine, with the TCM group relying on spirituality, while Western medicine solely on science. The old man wanted and Su Nu to show everyone the unity between human and nature, and between heaven and earth. Thus, this could be seen as a clash between science and spirituality. And Su Nu sat quietly listening to the old man. Dear friends, we all know that traditional medicine is based on spirituality, then evolved into herbal medicine and acupuncture. Why is the theory of traditional Chinese medicine based on spirituality? Because many of the early founders of medicine were Taoist priests, such as the author of the longevity book, Demon Cocoon, a famous Taoist master in ancient times. Why is there only traditional Chinese medicine today without mystical medicine? It's because ancient kings and emperors destroyed the system of mystical cultural heritage. Today, I am very honored to introduce you to the Taoist masters of medicine whom I have invited. After speaking, the old man looked towards and Su Nu, and she immediately got up from her seat, taking steps towards the lectern. Because the lectern was too high, and Su Nu had to jump up, then she waved to greet everyone. Seeing a child on the stage, the whole auditorium was stunned into silence. At this moment, and Su Nu signaled to the guards. They understood and began to introduce. Here are the earthly way Pio Mio sex, Wu Ru Dao Ren. Seeing the guards introduce with such enthusiasm, and Su Nu was very pleased. However, as she looked down, she noticed everyone smiling mischievously but no one clapping, and Su Nu felt uncomfortable. What further angered her was seeing everyone clapping vigorously to welcome an old man earlier, and some even jokingly remarked, Oh my, the girl is so cute, and now they're naming some kind of Daoist master, why not just summon the empress too? Hearing this, and Su Nu became very angry. Fortunately, the old man recognized her displeasure and promptly warned, Everyone, be silent, do not provoke and Su Nu. However, upon hearing the old man's words, the audience laughed even louder, making and Su Nu seat with rage. This crowd was truly playing with fire. In her fury, and Su Nu unleashed the strike of the light sword, gentle mastery towards the audience. After much practice, the girl could now attack the crowd from a distance. Initially, people were confused, but then they suddenly felt itchy all over and burst into laughter. Now they were afraid, thinking that and Su Nu was truly a mysterious martial arts master. In no time, they begged for her forgiveness. However, and Su Nu just snorted and said, Keep laughing. Little girl will make you laugh to your heart's content. Seeing this, everyone quickly raised their hands, claiming they wouldn't laugh anymore. Indeed, they didn't laugh anymore. After and Su Nu decided to settle the matter to begin her speech, she pressed the seal, preparing to dispel the light sword, gentle mastery spell. In her mind, and Su Nu thought, 
Today, I will show everyone the power of the mesmerizing martial arts. That day, the girl couldn't understand why she was so irritable to the point of distressing everyone around her. Even her fellow disciples were kicked by her, just for not wearing a face mask while walking. During her speech, feeling insulted for being called childish, and Su Nu immediately used the light sword, gentle mastery, towards the audience. Not satisfied, she also employed the mystical art of aura projection for everyone to witness. Pointing at someone, she said, he has a liver problem. The person was astonished because in Su Nu accurately diagnosed his illness. Next, she pointed at another person and said, if you keep drinking alcohol, you will die within three years. Then she said, that person has blood glow calamity. In summary, and Su Nu analyzed the health conditions of the entire audience and arrogantly claimed it to be the mystical aura projection of martial arts. Whether they believed it or not was up to them. After finishing speaking, she waved her hand and left, with Wen Xin and a few Taoist priests hastily following, even the old man calling out to accompany her. After In Su Nu left, everyone was startled. It seemed they had provoked a high-ranking figure, but two people remained calm. One was Sakura Sekia Shinji from the Medical Association, and the other was Ta Chi Pa Jong Bai from the Medical Institute. The two of them thought, perhaps a high-ranking figure has appeared in the world. This was very important information. Recently, there had been rumors about the appearance of a set of divine magnetite stone. Both of them suspected that in Su Nu might be related to this matter. Afterwards, they both unanimously left the assembly hall. Meanwhile, at in Su Nu's Taoist temple, people were scrambling to buy the elixir of longevity. Some recommended it to their friends, saying, This pill is very effective. I took it last night, and the next morning I felt refreshed, mentally sharper for any task. Some said, taking it can cure various minor ailments. But suddenly, a man pushed forward. The old Taoist asked him how many pills he wanted to buy, but the man waved his hand, saying he didn't come to buy pills, but only came to see a female Taoist who owned the divine magnetite stone, as he had heard about it from others. Hearing this, the old man proudly replied that his master indeed possessed the divine magnetite stone, but rarely used it. Moreover, if one wanted to meet the master, they had to wait for an announcement from the temple. The man didn't get angry, but thanked him and left. However, as he went out, he threw away the wave on his head, returning to the appearance of a young man. Then he sighed about how easy it was to extract information. Just a casual inquiry and everything was revealed. Then he got on his carriage, pondering over the information gathered today, realizing he needed to report to his superiors immediately. This little girl is truly the most mischievous I've ever seen. Just because someone said something to her, she used a whole million yuan worth of herbs to cook the hot pot. One day, the old Toas master asked and Su Nu, Master, could you cook a pot of herbal hot pot for our disciples? I've heard junior brother praise the herbal hot pot you cooked on the mountain as very delicious. Upon hearing this, and Su Nu thought, Indeed, it's been a while since I cooked such a pot. It's been a long time since and Su Nu had herbal hot pot. Even her set of secret five-element stones hasn't been used for a while. So she decided that today she would eat herbal hot pot. She pointed to her disciples and said, Today we'll cook hot pot at the Doa's temple. And master and the senior brothers will be present too. Call everyone. It's been a while since we had dinner together. Remember to call Chef Wu too. Tell him to buy ingredients for the hot pot. We'll cook a lot today for everyone to enjoy. The disciples joyfully received the order to call everyone and Su Nu took out the set of five flavored stones, poured them all into her hand. Thinking that she hadn't tasted the spicy flavor yet, she then took a stone symbolizing the spicy taste and put it in a bowl, soaking it for about half an hour. After that, almost everyone in Su Nu knew under the mountain, gathered, laughing and chatting happily around the dining table. At this moment, young Master Fang said to Aunt Su Nu, I heard that the junior master cooks very well. I wonder if it's true. Mr. Joe nodded in confirmation. Indeed, every time the master cooks, he is very generous. We are fortunate to enjoy it today. And Su Nu was busy preparing the hot pot, adding spice to make the dish even more delicious and enticing. She and her fellow disciples couldn't help but drool, unable to contain their hunger. After everything was ready, and Su Nu raised her hand and declared the feast to begin. Meanwhile, tension mounted among the master and junior disciples. At this moment, a junior disciple entered the room and reported to the master that news of Insu Nu, 
possessing the divine magnetite stone had spread everywhere, and many people were keeping an eye on it. Hearing this, the master thought to himself, they dare lay eyes on my disciple's possession. He immediately instructed the junior disciple to issue orders to all disciples practicing outside the mountain to converge at Insunu's temple immediately. The master also handed a jade pendant to the junior disciple, empowering him with temporary authority to command the disciples below the mountain. Finally, the master warned, if any disciple refuses to comply, they must be sealed off from their powers and expelled from the sect, forced to live an ordinary life forever. Grateful for such great power bestowed by the master, the junior disciple bowed in gratitude before setting out to execute the task. Meanwhile, and Su Nu was still happily enjoying the feast, unaware of the danger looming over her. Looking at the meat in the hot pot, it seemed that the dish she cooked was very delicious, because today she had chosen a spicy stone for seasoning. Even the usually aloof Gu Jing Jin couldn't help but find the aroma of the hot pot enticing. She took a bite of the meat and immediately felt a happiness like never before. The delicious flavor of the meat was so satisfying that Gu Jing Jin couldn't help but dance with joy. Everyone had different reactions after eating, but they all felt the food was absolutely amazing. Seeing this, and Su Nu felt regretful again, because each time she used her set of five flavored stones, they seemed to shrink. This time, they had shrunk a lot, which saddened her deeply. Meanwhile, the master was relaxed, sitting on the rocking chair, while the junior disciple reported that the disciples had been gathered at the designated location. Upon hearing this, the master stroked his beard and said, First, let the disciples weigh at the temple, then we'll surprise and Su Nu together. At this moment, and Su Nu returned from the restroom and overheard Nu Yu saying to Gu Jing Jin, You absolutely must not allow it, letting Tang Chao succeed so easily, because for a woman to gain the respect of men, she must be independent. Hearing the term independent, Gu Jing Jin immediately asked Mu Yu, What does that mean? Mu Yu explained, Independence means being able to make decisions in the family, being good at cooking, buying luxury cars, owning beautiful houses, and most importantly, being able to defeat unruly men. Hearing this, and Su Nu, who was eavesdropping nearby, thought to herself, being a woman is really not easy. But as she was deeply engrossed in listening, she was called by Mr. Mu, saying the master was looking for her. And Su Nu hurriedly followed Mr. Mu, and halfway there, she finally asked the master what he needed her for. But as soon as Insu Nu stepped out, she was stunned to see the courtyard filled with fellow disciples. Seeing that the disciples had gathered, the master announced three matters that needed to be addressed. Firstly, Insu Nu's divine magnetite stone had been exposed, which could attract ill-intentioned individuals. So the master summoned the disciples to protect her. They were to follow the leadership of senior brother Lang Yigu and eradicate the demonic sex completely. Secondly, Seeing the promising business model of Ensu Nu's temple, the master hoped that after this storm, the disciples could open more temples across the country. At this moment, Ensu Nu appeared. Despite seeing the gathering of senior brothers, she remained calm because she was the most beloved disciple of the master, sitting right next to him. As soon as she sat down, Ensu Nu overheard the senior brothers discussing. The master was no longer secretive. He was about to shine. Before she could understand, the master announced the third matter. He that passed on the ancient supreme inheritance to Ensu Nu, making her the head of the P.O. Mio sex from now on. This news shocked the senior brothers, and even Ensu Nu herself was surprised by this arrangement. However, immediately, a seemingly older senior brother objected, stating, Junior sister is only four years old. How can she bear the responsibility and lead the P.O. Mio sex? After all, the position of the sect leader is not a joke. Immediately, the master slapped him hard in the face, causing him to fly into the air, before falling back to the ground. The master said that anyone who disagreed could speak up, but if they lacked the courage, they should blame themselves for being indifferent. Faced with this, all the disciples bowed their heads in silence. Seeing no objections from the disciples, the master continued to press on with his words. In the end, despite their dissatisfaction, the senior brothers still had to bow to Ensu Nu and address her as greetings, new sect leader. Meanwhile, Ensu Nu was completely oblivious to the situation, only thinking to herself, what is happening? How did she become the sect leader of P.O. Mio Sex? She had just finished eating and was planning to go for a stroll. 
This four-year-old girl had become the sect leader of the most powerful cultivation sect in the cultivation world. Yet she was still lazy to take on that role. She was still young and wanted to play. For the past few days, the author hadn't been updating because Ensu Nu had punished him by spanking him with a stick for two consecutive days, and it still hurt. The reason was that Ensu Nu strongly opposed becoming the sect leader, sitting and crying, saying she didn't want to be the sect leader. Therefore, she wouldn't be able to enjoy herself freely anymore. Seeing this, the senior brothers were very annoyed. Everyone wanted to be the sect leader of P.O. Mio Sex, the highest position in the cultivation world but it had been given to a little girl, who was even crying and refusing. At that moment, the master pointed at the senior brothers and instructed them to console the new sect leader and stop her from crying by any means necessary. Then he left, advising not to call him unless the sect was on the brink of extinction. Seeing this, the senior brothers had no choice but to try a comfort and sue new. However, the senior brothers were cultivators from the mountains, not adept at comforting children. They could only reassure and Sue knew that they would play with her in the future, agreeing to whatever games she wanted to play. Upon hearing this, and Sue knew stopped crying and said she wanted to play cops and robbers, with the senior brothers playing the role of the criminals. If caught by her, they would receive a spanking. The senior brothers thought it was just a simple child's game and immediately agreed. Some even added a rule that if and Sue knew couldn't catch them, she wasn't allowed to cry. And Su Nu agreed to this rule because she knew her Three Heavens Lightning Movement technique, the fastest martial art in the world, and within the P.O. Mio sex, only she knew it. Then, and Su Nu grabbed a stick and told the senior brothers to run ahead while she counted to ten before starting the chase. Someone asked, why not count to a hundred? It was because on her first day of school, and Su Nu had skipped learning to count beyond ten. The senior brothers nodded in agreement. Some even joked that they should let Ensu Nu catch them for fun since she was the new sect leader. Although she was still young now, she would mature quickly, and who knows, they might need her help in the future. For now, they would just play along with her to leave a good impression. After the discussion, the senior brothers left one by one, but they would regret it for the rest of their lives for what happened next. When Ensu Nu finished counting and prepared to chase them, her four oldest disciples immediately covered their eyes and dared not look. The girl immediately unleashed the Three Heavens Lightning Movement Technique, moving as fast as lightning, and Su Nu wielded her stick, striking each senior brother on their bottoms, feeling increasingly satisfied with each hit. In the end, the agonized screams of the senior brothers echoed throughout the sect, sounding like pigs being slaughtered to those outside. Despite her young age, she had ascended to the position of sect leader, but had failed to fulfill her responsibilities. She even accepted bribes and fake reverence from her subordinates like any other corrupt leader. Yesterday, after becoming sect leader, and Su Nu had beaten the senior brothers who opposed her. When they encountered her, they could only praise her as a remarkable female leader, capable of leading with honor, privileged to be led by her, and assured that P.O. Mio sex would become renowned because of her. Hearing these flatteries, and Su Nu began losing herself, even accepting congratulatory gifts from her peers. After collecting the gifts, she cheerfully declared that she wouldn't spank them regularly anymore, then casually asked what these senior brothers usually did. They explained that they were tasked with gathering information, disguises, espionage, investigation, assassination, and disposing of sect enemies at the sect leader's command, similar to the secret agents of the Ming dynasty. Hearing this, and Su Nu thought they were quite cool and asked if she could join them in fighting. One of them explained that they operated covertly rather than engaging in combat, requiring acting skills and intelligence rather than brute strength. However, and Su Nu silently acknowledged her shortcomings in skills such as acting and intelligence, so she thought it best not to get involved. Then, a senior brother asked if she had any instructions, and she waved her hand to dismiss them, then handed the lucky money to the little fox, saying, being a sect leader is fun, there's lots of lucky money to buy meat for it. Later, and Su Nu returned home, feeling tired after a day of play. When her mother asked what she had been up to, and Su Nu claimed she had been busy. Hearing this, her mother was surprised, wondering what a child could be busy with. Suddenly, and Su Nu pulled out a stack of vouchers and handed them to her mother, saying she had earned a lot of money and would buy her many beautiful clothes and delicious food. Her mother couldn't believe her eyes, looking at the hundred thousand vouchers, feeling faint. She asked if Ensu Nu had recruited new disciples again, 
But as Su Nu explained, no, that's the lucky money from the respectful disciples of the sect when I became the sect leader. After speaking, and Su Nu yawned and went to bed, claiming she was very tired after a busy day. Watching her child, and Su Nu's mother couldn't help but think that in her past life, she must have saved the universe to have given birth to such a genius child. Not even five years old, and already the leader of the world's number one sect, and better at making money than her father, who had to work all day. She silently mused, This child must want to challenge the heavens. Upon learning that his daughter had become the sect leader, and Su Nu's father remained calm. However, after hearing from his wife about the power of the sect, even giving in Su Nu a voucher of a hundred thousand as if it were a toy, he was astonished, although a few hundred thousand meant little to him. When he heard that Ensu Nu used the money to buy clothes for her mother and even bought delicious food for her younger brother, he felt a pang of jealousy and asked, Why didn't our daughter mention anything about what she wanted to buy for me? Hearing this, Ensu Nu's mother patted her husband on the shoulder, saying that their daughter didn't mention it and pointing out that he always had a stern face, trying to act like a strict father. She suggested he learn from her and become warmer. The next day, Ensu Nu's mother handed her a card saying the password was her birthday, and a total of 93 lucky money envelopes from her were inside. Seeing this, and Su Nu hurriedly waved it away, saying she only needed a million and her parents could use the rest to buy things. Her mother rubbed her daughter's head and told her that they were still young and could earn money, so the money and Su Nu earned could be spent however she liked. She added that when they were old, she would become more obedient. After speaking, and's mother held her younger brother and rummaged through her pockets then handed a white envelope to Ansu Nu, saying, This person might be facing difficulties. Lucky money is given from the heart, so don't belittle it. Ansu Nu curiously asked her mother what was written on the envelope. Her mother explained that it was the name Mok Swan. Ansu Nu suddenly remembered him as a shy young man of about 20, who would only speak a few words casually before leaving. Thinking about it, Ansu Nu scratched her head, feeling overwhelmed because there were too many disciples in the sect for her to manage. Just the thought of it gave her a headache. Then and Su Nu ran off, calling the disciples who were drinking tea back to ask for advice. Although they didn't understand what was happening, they followed and Su Nu into the room, and Su Nu told them that she had become the sect leader and needed their advice on management. Upon hearing this, Mu Yu eagerly suggested modernizing the management style, wearing glasses and discussing very detailed reform ideas. The elder disciples all agreed, but and Su Nu felt overwhelmed and dizzy listening to them, finally unable to bear the pressure and fainted. The senior disciples rushed back to check on and Su Nu's condition, seeing her exhausted. The four senior disciples thought she was fatigued, so they ran back to check. And Su Nu raised her hand weakly and asked with difficulty, Mr. Mu, is there a simpler way to manage? Mr. Mu happily replied that if and Su Nu trusted him, he was accustomed to management matters, so she could just leave it to him. Hearing this, and Su Nu pointed at Mr. Mu and said, Then just do it like that. Then she dashed out, leaving everyone stunned. Meanwhile, a guard from the Yin family was standing under a tree, observing. He said to the man accompanying him, Young master, madam has left the sect. The man, and Su Nu's father, stepped out and said, Then let's go in. But as they entered, the guard, curious, asked why he didn't accompany his wife to visit and Su Nu. He was promptly scolded, don't ask unnecessary questions. In truth, he had a reason for not accompanying his wife. He feared she would ridicule him for fawning over their daughter. Yet, he wanted to do something for and Su Nu, so he could only sneak in afterward. Stepping into the sect, he carefully opened the door to her room, holding a gift. Inside, he saw his beloved daughter holding a book, laughing to herself. He quickly interrupted and Su Nu's reverie, saying he had brought her plenty of good food. Without waiting for a response, he opened the food box and stroked her hair, asking what she had been busy with lately and why she rarely stayed at home. He and his wife missed her dearly and didn't know when she would come to visit. But and Su Nu paid no attention to her father's words, focusing only on the small cake he had brought. Indeed, the aroma of the cake was so enticing that it even awakened the little fox, who rushed straight to the cake. Afterwards, he revealed the purpose of his visit this time. He wanted to request a position as an advisor for An Su Nu, essentially entering through the back door. He thought he would surely succeed, as he was the father of the sect leader and had a certain status. 
How could he not obtain a position in his daughter's company? Upon hearing this, and Sunu asked her father if he had come to apply for a job. She even hired her father to work for her, paying him a monthly salary. Instead of getting angry, he was very happy because this way he could be with his beloved daughter. When his daughter asked, how much is the salary? He said he didn't need money, mainly wanting to help protect his dear daughter. But then, and Sunu disagreed saying that even if they were siblings, they still needed to calculate things clearly. And Su Nu's father thought that when she first returned, she didn't even know what money was. So why was she now so obsessed with it? He felt heartbroken, thinking he should quickly return his beloved daughter to him. But he still compromised, saying his daughter could pay him wherever she wanted, and he would come here to work for two hours every day. After that, and Su Nu said she would ask Mu Yu to arrange a position for her father. He was happy to have a legitimate reason to be close to his beloved daughter every day. Previously, and Su Nu used money to buy gifts for her mother, making her father jealous. So and Su Nu's father decided to leave the company to work for her. Just as he took office, he discovered a major issue. Mr. Zhao said, There's a Tai Cha clinic that has filed a petition with the authorities requesting that and Su Nu return the divine needle as it belongs to them. Upon hearing this, and Su Nu was furious. The divine needle clearly belonged to her, given to her by her master. But Mr. Mu explained that the opposing party presented historical evidence showing that the divine needle belonged to them. They even incited online public opinion to support them, putting En Su Nu in a very unfavorable situation. Upon hearing this, En Su Nu became even more furious, to the point where even her father felt that it was unreasonable. En Su Nu said to just let them show themselves, and she would teach them a lesson. But her father advised her to stay calm. If her side struck first, it would be seen as aggressive and coercive. He proposed two options. One was to ignore the mockery on the internet, as the divine needle was in their possession, and they couldn't take it away, and the other was to outsmart them and win back public support. Seeing and Sue knew very sad, her father gently stroked her head and promised to seek legal counsel, and Sue knew reluctantly accepted everyone's consolation. However, she still seemed melancholy. But suddenly she realized that there were actually many people who trusted and supported her. No matter what she did, they seemed to always stand by her. Even when she came up with something irrational, thinking so, and Su Nu no longer felt sad at all and decided to follow her father's advice, paying no attention to those people. The divine needle was in her hands, and no one could take it away for sure. And Su Nu seemed to have grown up no longer resorting to violence to solve everything. Seeing this, her disciples quickly praised her, and even her father joyfully stroked her cheek, saying, My daughter has grown up. Next, Mr. Mu spoke up. Now that the issue has been resolved, it's time to prepare for the election of the sect leader. Today is the day and Su Nu organizes the election of the sect leader in the sect. Upon arriving at the sect, Mr. Ju informed and Su Nu that the current candidates for sect leader are showcasing their martial arts skills, and she should go take a look. And Su Nu inquired about the rules and the order of the election, not wanting to let those unfit for the position take charge. Mott had explained, To run for sec leader, one must pass through various rounds of skill competitions, martial arts battles, and trials. This ensures that the elected leader is both talented in martial arts and knowledgeable. On the stage, and Su Nu saw the candidates competing and decided to join in the fun. Initially, she paid attention to a blonde young man because of his remarkable strength, defeating his opponents in just one move. Seeing this, and Su Nu naturally cheered for him. She later learned his name was Mok Swan, the same person who had given her a red packet containing 1,000 Chinese yuan. Without hesitation, and Su Nu waved for Mok Swan to come back. Despite his strength, Mok Swan politely walked over to greet and Su Nu. Next, and Su Nu asked why he had only given her 1,000 yuan. Upon hearing this, Mok Suwon hesitated and didn't know how to respond, finally just smiling and saying, I don't have money. 